Hello, every creature, and welcome to the Jelly Bean Jar. My name's Britt, but my friends call me Bean, and I absolutely need to launch straight into things. Today, I'm going to review Netflix's new series, Green Eggs and Ham. And oh boy, I have a lot to say. First of all, if you have not seen it, it's on Netflix, and go watch it immediately. I demand it. Lol. There will be spoilers for the show here, so yeah. Alright, so I have to say, I didn't expect it to be as good as it was, but it was absolutely phenomenal. As a child, my all-time favorite Dr. Seuss book was Green Eggs and Ham. I loved reading it when I had free time in the library, I loved being read it by my teachers, and it's now pure nostalgia for me. I remember seeing the old cartoon. I liked it, but it was sort of generic, a carbon copy of the book for the most part. Enjoyable as a child, but not something I would enjoy now. It was definitely interesting to see it animated, though. When I first heard Netflix was releasing a series, I most definitely had my doubts. I haven't been terribly impressed with the Dr. Seuss movies. While I enjoyed the Lorax, Horton Here's a Who, and How the Grinch Stole Christmas, there were a lot of aspects I could take issue with. And don't even get me started on the bad acid trip that was the cat in the hat. So yeah. Initially, I was just slapping my forehead, irritated that another of my childhood stories would be butchered. In fact, I opted out of even attempting to watch it. However, my opinion started to change when sneak peeks started popping up. When I saw the first looks at the show, what initially drew me into deciding to watch it was the animation and voice acting. The voices were absolutely perfect. The animation was really unique. I was sort of captivated. When it came on, I still wasn't really over the moon to get started. I was more like, oh, hey, that's there now, I'll add it to my list and watch it sometime. And I did. The night I watched it was not long after it had been released. Uh, maybe about a week and a half, maybe? But I decided to just squeeze in an episode before I went to bed, see what all the fuss was about. That was the most foolish assumption I could have ever made. Boy, was I in for a ride. Next thing I knew, I was eight episodes in and it was around five in the morning. Yeah, so much for sleeping. And of course, as soon as I woke up late in the day, I binged the rest of it. Oh my gosh, and what a binge it was. The characters were absolutely amazing. They were charming, well thought out, and well written, and their voice actors absolutely did a phenomenal job with them especially when things got emotional. The animation was spectacular, beautiful, unique, and smooth. I loved the outlines reminiscent of Crayon. I also have to draw special attention to the expressions. The expressions of the characters were so unique and beautifully captured. They were an aspect that definitely drew you in, especially the very expressive and soulful eyes of the characters. For a 2D cartoon, their eyes seem to have endless depths, and it definitely got you in the feels and the emotional scenes. And the story. Oh man, the story. I couldn't grasp how one could take such a simple book and turn it into a whole long story. But they did. And they did so, so incredibly successfully. The writing was reminiscent of the original book, most indefinitely, but was also very unique and original. The story idea, for example, was excellent, the humor was great, and there was just the right amount of backwards Dr. Seuss logic that we so love. I loved the direction the show took. The explanation for Guy and Sam meeting in the first place, their unexpected journey together to bring an endangered creature back to its home, or so you think, <coughs> er, nothing. The way they grow together and the story develops is just amazing, and dashed throughout it is the green eggs and ham. That leads me to the characters and the character stories. Right off the bat, we got a feel for both Sam and Guy, and throughout they are developed and explained so phenomenally it touches you. These characters now have traits and problems that we can relate to, not just, do you want my moly looking eggs and ham? No, that's gross, Sam I am. <laughs> I relate to Guy on a personal level. I've always been creative but had my problems. Being autistic and growing up bullied, bouncing from school to school, getting bad grades, and only wanting to focus on my creativity, my writing, my voice acting, my art, etc., I felt like a failure, a disappointment to everyone around me, and a lot of the time I still do. But 
some people in my family have been beyond amazing and supportive through it all, and I don't always appreciate that. After all, I could have no family at all. Guy's development through it all, going from closed off and miserable and just giving up on life to opening his heart, finding his passion, and letting go of his anger and pain, it's a trip. Really, it is. And it's an amazing journey the audience gets to experience right along with Guy. As for Sam, I didn't really expect him to be an orphan. It was a twist that actually caught me off guard with the way he spoke of his mother all the time. I know exactly how lucky you are. Because I never had a family. What did you say? I made it all up. Well, growing up alone and sad and feeling like nobody ever wanted or liked you the way you were, I get that too. Though I had my family, I always felt alone. I was different. I had no friends at school. Being autistic and getting overloaded or having tics or being creative and not able to learn or deal with the world the same as everyone else, all of that was viewed as weirdness, oddity, and it just felt like nobody was ever really there for me. Nobody wanted me to be, well, me. My folks didn't always know how to deal with someone like me either. I feel Sam's pain and... His heartbreak broke my heart. Never in my life did I expect a Dr. Seuss story to actually make me cry. But I gotta tell you, the episode House just did it. It was too much. I'm beyond happy he found Guy. But his character didn't really end there, did it? The ultimate plot twist that I didn't see coming on any level was Sam being the bad guy. I have also never screamed at my television, and I had two very confused dogs. <laughs> yeah, no, the whole series has been an emotional roller coaster, and I'm surprised by some of the things they got away with. Like, the diner gag where Justin's diner's lights were messed up and kept flickering and spelling out just die. Like, wow. I was also mortified when Guy finally snapped and basically said that Sam's mother abandoned him because of who he is and nobody likes him sort of thing. Like, ouch. I've tried you as a friend and you don't fit. You don't fit anybody. Not even your own mother. Oh dear. I think my jaw was on the floor at that point. Even the narrator sounded pretty shocked. But hey, it makes sense to eventually snap when people are trying to force you to do something you don't want to and have repeatedly said no to. Obviously, Guy immediately regretted it, but still, just... Damn. Anyways, there was a lot of great humor in this show that I think mostly older audiences would be the ones to get. One thing that I absolutely loved, and I have to commend whoever came up with it, was the green eggs and ham themselves. Suddenly in this show, they mean something. They mean a lot, actually. And there's a reason that Sam loves them so much. There's a reason that they're important. That reason being that the only thing Sam can remember about his mother is she made him the very best green eggs and ham. Do you remember anything about your parents? I remember my mom. A little. Just one thing. What? It's not important. Go ahead. It's silly. Sam. She made me breakfast. So, he keeps trying them, hoping one day he will taste hers and find her. That was just such a sweet and sentimental little detail that felt like it just tied Sam's personality together. It was so, so moving, and I feel like that little detail changed Guy's view of Green Eggs and Ham, as well as his view of Sam. There's a bit more to the little guy than ridiculously silly antics. It was hard to choose a favorite character between Guy and Sam, though there are a lot of great characters, but I have to go with Guy as I relate to him on a deeper level. They're both so gosh darn cute, though. Anyways, in conclusion, I say this show is overall absolutely phenomenal. I haven't been so ensnared by a show or its characters in so long. 
It's a great modernized adventure for kids and fun and nostalgic for us older folks. It caters to a wide audience base and has amazing writing, voice acting, character development, and animation. I'm gonna binge the whole thing again soon and I very much hope to see more. I MUST know why Mama I am abandoned the precious Sammy Bean and we totally need more Guy and the Shelly Fluff. Also, did Mr. Jenkins find his mom? We must know all. Anyways, 10 out of 10 would binge again, lol. This has been Brit, but my friends call me Bean, saying farewell for now, Bean Squad. Bye!